Hey guys, it's me and Akalit Mashile and today I want to talk a little bit about the best savings account in South Africa in 2019 April and I put this timestamp because I don't want you watching this like in like 2020 or 2023 and then thinking this is not the best savings account because things obviously are going to change and banks are going to innovate and try and give us the best savings accounts as much as possible and definitely because there are many other banks that are coming into South Africa as especially the digital banks, and they're going to give the traditional banks a run for their money in terms of making better products that people actually want to take up. But remember that none of my videos constitute as financial advice. If you are looking for financial advice, please speak to somebody who is certified and registered with the FSCA. So a couple of years ago, actually, no, not even a couple of years ago, on the 16th of July, 2014, I decided that I had a lump sum, which was 5,000 Rand, and I wanted to put it away in a savings account. I don't even know if it was actually me choosing a savings account or I was looking for an investment account because I really did not know the difference then. So I decided, you know what, let me go to one of the banks and see what they've got for me. And at that time, Bitvest Bank was one of the best banks in terms of giving you interest. So I went for them and I wanted to put my money for just 12 months, right? Put it away for 12 months and they promised me at maturity, which would have been on the 16th of July 2015, I would get 7.02%. And obviously, this was a variable interest rate account. And what does that actually mean? It means that the more money you've got that you're putting away, you're probably going to get a higher interest rate. Also, the longer that you're putting your money away, you're probably going to get a higher interest rate. So a variable interest rate account is an account that is dependent on various other factors. And that will then change, obviously, the interest rate that the bank offers you. Right. So I put in 5,000 Rand and I was so disappointed on the, 15, the 16th of July 2015 when I got my money as 5,351. I was really disappointed. My heart actually broke, guys, because I could not believe how it was possible that I had only made 351 rand in terms of my money, right? And that sounds maybe to other people like it's great because they're saying it's just 12 months. You got, you made an additional 351 rand, but I had higher hopes. And I think a lot of us go into these kind of things, savings accounts, investment accounts with these high hopes that our money is going to grow very quickly. Oh, it's going to grow very greatly, in fact. And when it doesn't, we get disappointed and we think that the system doesn't work. But it's primarily because we didn't actually understand, number one, how interest rates work. Number two, why it's important to keep your money in an investment or in savings account for longer for you to reap much better benefits. And number three, how actually interest rates are actually structured. And the fact that savings accounts are not all made the same way. So when you are choosing a savings account, you need to ask yourself what it is that you still want that money to do for you. Same way you would ask when it comes to an investment account. And this is because really a lot of, uh, and I'll give you another example. There's a gentleman over the weekend when we were at the F&B Game Changers Awards who said that um, as a stock fell, they had put their money away in a stock fell. They opened a stock fell account. They put in, uh, their money into that, but it's not growing. And the first question I asked him is, why did you guys open that specific account? And he said, no, it's a group of uh, uh, people that are coming together and it's a stock fund. I said, well, if that's what you want and that's the benefit that you're deriving from that account, then you are still okay. But if you want growth, then you need to look at a different account that gives you a different interest rate. Now, the other thing to also remember is that um, these accounts give you different interest rates. I saw the other day a big billboard, one of the big banks, the red one had a big advert about how you can get 13% from their fixed deposit account. And I was like, well, is that a nominal rate or is that the actual rate, right? And there's a huge difference, guys, in terms of what the re interest rates are called. When you see it saying a nominal rate, you need to remember that it means that the inflation adjustment has not yet been made. In other words, you still need to subtract inflation from that amount of money. So again, when people look at the 351 that I got over the 5,000 Rand in 12 months, that was actually the amount that was worked on a nominal rate. Because remember that a Rand today is not a Rand tomorrow. In other words, inflation does kick in. What you can buy this year with your 5,000 Rand, you might not be able to buy the same thing next year. So this year I might be able to buy a PlayStation or I might be able to buy a bundle of 18 inch uh, Brazilian weave, but next year I might not be able to buy that same 18 inch. I might only be able to buy now a 13 or a 12 inch with the same 5,000 Rand. Why? Because inflation is the fluctuation of prices of goods and services. And in South Africa, on 
on average, our inflation can range from 4% to 6%. So it's important that when you're looking at the rate that you are being given to remember that the moment they say it's a nominal rate, which generally is what the financial institutions will advertise, they will advertise their nominal rate because it will look higher why? Because it will factor in inflation. So they will say to you, oh, come open a fixed deposit account, 13 or 14 percent. You must remember that that means that it's 14 percent minus inflation. And generally for most of these people, when the rate is that high, there are various other rules that come into that account. And it could be things like your money needs to be fixed for um, a, a, a period of like three years and it can only be a once off payment that you make. It's a lump sum. It can't be a lot of, uh, you can't make additional payments into it. So generally what banks do is that they will sit with their actuaries and they'll put together financial products, right? In as much as yes, they want to give us the best, they also want to make money. So what they'll do is on that savings account, they'll put in a lot of rules. The other rule that they love putting in is what is called a minimum investment amount or a minimum uh, deposit. So generally the accounts that give you very high interest rates will have like a minimum account uh, deposit or minimum opening balance of like 10,000 Rand. For instance, um, if and B's got one, it's called the maximizer account. Really amazing. I've got it. Um, it's really, really good. It gives you an interest rate, I think just above 7%. Um, but you need a hundred thousand rand balance to be able to access it, right? And there's various other ones. And I'm gonna, uh, I've got my laptop here, so I'm gonna uh, uh, read you some of the accounts that um, people are really loving on the streets. But they do have various, um, 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 what do you call them? Minimum deposits. For instance, APSA has one. It's got a minimum deposit of a uh, thousand rand. It is a variable interest rate account. Again, that means that. Um, depending on your balance and how long you're keeping your money you can get a certain different different rate so me and you could have different rates based on how much we each have to put away or um how long we're putting our money away right um that account at fnb is got an interest rate of 3.25 to 9 percent and you would need to keep your money in there for eight to eight days to six months so that is their fixed period right um capitec has got one um where you need to put in a minimum deposit of ten thousand rand and you can get access to 9.25 interest rate again um six to 60 months um uh, fixed deposit right um or fixed period of how long you have to keep your money in there for net bank also has one you get 5.5 um to 8.16 percent one month to 18 months fnb has one um where you get 8.70 also it's got a minimum deposit of 10,000 rand so you must remember that where the, the interest rate generally is higher it means that you need to keep the money in for longer but also it got it has a higher minimum deposit again there's also great um, 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 and these are fixed deposit accounts right so your general everyday um, savings account apps has got one called the true save account very lower minimum account minimum deposit this is because these are more flexible right so again, there's the other thing. Liquidity is very, very important when it comes to savings and investments. But specifically on savings, liquidity basically is how accessible your money is, right? If you leave the money in the bank for longer, the bank can use your money for a longer period of time to borrow other people loans and credit cards and all sorts of things, right? But if you need access to your money at any point, then that's why they bring down the interest rates and then they will um, also uh, have maybe a smaller minimum deposit. For instance, absolutely got an account called the true save account it's a minimum deposit of 50 rand and you get 3.70 percent fnb has got a savings account 100 rand is the minimum deposit you can get between 5.25 and 6.30 percent capitec the global one account 25 rand is the minimum amount you can get between 5.1 to 9.25 percent standard bank has got the pure save account um it's got a minimum deposit of 50 rand and you can get up to 2.85 percent and net bank's got a savings deposit of 50 a uh, savings deposit account um 50 rand is the minimum deposit amount and you can get between 0 0.76 to 2.05 percent that's actually the worst one of all their savings accounts but at the same time if you go to hippo.co.za and you do that comparison thing you can get other um, 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 accounts that have a slightly lower um, 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 liquidity so for instance african bank has got a 90 day um, account where you need to keep your money in there for 90 days you can get up to 7.3 percent also a variable uh, rates bank account right but you need a minimum deposit of 500 rand so you can start to see that um 
the higher the interest rate is in terms of the ones where you can make additional lumps or additional payments the minimum investment might be slightly higher than the ones where you don't need uh way way where you actually uh, uh can just in a uh, button deposit your money slightly higher higher button uh, uh minimum deposit and also a slightly higher interest rate um again um African banks got one for 32 days and for seven days. And then next will be Capit uh, FNB and then it will be Capitec Bank. But there is a darling in the shores currently in South Africa and it is a time bank. It is a digital banking se sector. The digital banking sector is going to give the traditional banks a run for their money. Why? Because these guys are, it's easier to do things on digital, right? For a lot of people. But also these guys are new. So they are trying to, you know, get as many people as possible to open accounts. So it's an onboarding system, I think. Um, but I am yet, I, I'm actually very, very interested to see how long these accounts that they've got will last for and also the interest rate that they are offering if they've got more people, you know? So they've got an account called the Gold Save account. And basically, um, uh, you get quite a, a reasonable interest rate again one to 30 days you get six percent if you keep your money for one to 30 days if you keep your money for a month in that account it will grow by six percent if you keep your money for 90 up to 90 days from 31 days to 90 days you can get seven percent if you can keep your money for 90 days uh, 91 days you get nine percent and if you keep your money for 90 days but you put in a notice and you can give them an additional 10 days to um to put to pay out your money they will bump you up to 10 percent so basically if the inflation is sitting at like five percent it means that five percent will be your actual rate but also just keeping in mind the fees and all those kind of things it's very important that you also remember those kind of things but yeah as i said they are currently the darling in the country in terms of a savings account or the best savings account but i as i'm going to stress out and i'm going to keep stressing this out not all savings accounts are made the same so it is very difficult because you're not comparing apples to apples there's no way that a standard bank and an fnb will have exactly the same account right um there are other accounts that uh, don't really make it into these lists again it's because they've either got a very high minimum deposit amount like i said the um, i know investec has got an account where you also need a, a balance of a hundred thousand rand to be able to put it in to be able to save your money there I think the big difference that you need to remember is that when you are saving, you're saving for short-term purposes. Um, it's money that you're saving for now. Like something can happen now. I'm just joking. Like, but like if something happens now, you are able to access that money. I think that's the most important thing about having a savings account because it generally plays the role of it being an emergency account or um, if something, it's like a rainy day fund, basically, it covers you. Um, and a lot of people generally what they do is that with those kind of accounts, they're not really looking for amazing growth. They just want to know that their money is safe, number one. Um, it, is, it preserves its value, so it beats inflation. Your money needs to beat inflation or else you're moving backwards, right? And then when it comes to investments, people are now looking to invest out something. So you're putting money in, hoping to get something over and above what you have put in, right? But remembering that with investments generally, unless you've got capital guarantee, it is also possible to lose your initial capital. So for instance, and I always give the example of cows. If you buy four cows and they all get mad cow disease, they die, your investment and your original capital dies with that investment, right? Whereas if you get a capital guarantee, you can invest maybe in, a, in an investment account with one of the banks, market really market linked but you ask for a capital guarantee obviously the interest rate that they're going to offer you will be a little bit lower why because they're guaranteeing your capital so they're saying no matter what happens in the market if you do lose we'll still be able to give you the initial capital that you put in you just won't make any money right um Again, those will generally have a lowered interest rate. But where you are taking a higher risk, remember higher risk is potential high, um, high return. It's not always guaranteed. It's potential high return. But generally when you are investing, you are hoping to get something back, number one, but also for your investment to grow. So that's what also happens when it comes to shares. You're hoping to get dividends from the shares that you have bought or the company that you've bought into, but also you hope that the share value or the share portfolio uh, value or your, the share price of where you've bought will then appreciate and will increase. So that's basically how it works. Remember, just to recap, not all savings accounts are made the same. You need to actually read and understand because I get a lot of people that complain and say, yeah, I put my money here. I've been, it's been sitting there for 
five, ten years, but it's not growing. I'm not seeing any growth. I'm not making money. In actual fact, it's moving backwards. You need to ask yourself what type of an account you got. Number one, did you get a capital uh, a guarantee? Number two, and then third, but not uh, third, but not last, because there's a whole lot of variety of things that you need to think about. Is whether or not you are given a nominal return or an actual real return. Mwah.